In this presentation, we're going to discuss about symbols. So a debug symbol or PDB file is generated by the linker. It has PDB extension or .pdb extension. It mainly contains the details of the type. For example, if you have a structure, it has the information about the elements inside the structure and size of it, etc. Details of the function, function names, arguments passed, frame size, etc. It contains a subset of the information which is there in the source code, mainly related to names. So normally when we say symbol, it is a substitute for a name. As I mentioned, it contains information about stack frame size, optimization information, etc. PDB file or the symbols are not needed for running a binary. If you want to execute a binary or running an application, you don't need PDB. So it's not a runtime requirement by the loader of the operating system, but it is needed for debugging that particular binary. So if you want to look inside the binary and to understand what is going on, you need to have symbols. So why we need symbols? So binary generated by the linker or compiler in some of the programming languages does not have the variable or function name information. There are exceptions to this particular statement, for example, .NET Java. So they have something called metadata which has variables and function names. In this particular discussion, I am not discussing about such programming languages. The discussion is more or less strictly C++, C++ native C++. C++. In those programming languages, you don't have any variable names or function names in the runtime. It's all addresses and binaries, ones and zeros. Without the symbols, all you can see is ones and zeros. So binary does not have any simple information. So memory is just a mapping of the binary at the end of the day. So memory also does not have any simple information. So debugger needs symbols to translate the address to names or the binary to readable names. So this is an example of how this works together. So this is the program or the runtime information. So you have the binary here which is loaded into that address space and you have an address. So 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this address, you don't know what it means. So when you look at the debugger without the PDB, all you're going to see is 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, if you have the PDB of that particular binary, which is abc.sys, normally it is abc.pdb. If you have that, probably you'll be able to translate what that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 means. It could be a function name, say for example, driver entry or any other functions or it can be a global variable. Maybe it can be nothing as well. So only if you have PDB, you'll be able to translate that particular address to a human readable name which is related to the source code from which the binary is coming so here is a question so we are debugging with Visual Studio for a long time and never cared about symbols so we were not setting any symbols we were not worried about symbols in our Visual Studio why is that? So Visual Studio always generate the binary and the PDB in the same folder. So if you have seen the binary generated by the Visual Studio, you would have seen a PDB file as well. 
file with .pdb extension. So whenever you start debugging in Visual Studio, it will automatically load the PDB at the time of debugging. So it was automatically getting loaded in Visual Studio because in Visual Studio we always build and then debug. So in WinDebug, why we are bothered about simple is that is not always the case. Now PDB has nothing to do with debug builds. Some people believe that PDB gets generated only during debug builds. That is incorrect. PDB is more important for release build because normally you give a release build to your customers and if something happens in the production at your customer environment if you want to debug you need the PDB symbols. So a little bit about PDB file. It is called a program database. That is the acronym for PDB. The format of PDB is undocumented. It is very tightly coupled with the implementation of a linker and compiler which gets always changed. So this format is not documented. But most of the information from a PDB you can access via debugger interface SDK or DIA SDK. Now a little bit about Microsoft symbols. For example if you have a program say foo.exe or foo.sys as you have the source code, you are building it and you have the PDB. All the applications and system files running on Windows depends on a lot of Windows binaries as well. Say for example, ntoskernel.exe, ntdll.dll, hal.dll, etc. These are the very common binaries which normally our programs link to and these binaries are coming from Microsoft and it is built by Microsoft. To get the symbol of this particular binaries which is very important for debugging especially using WinDebug, public symbol of Microsoft. So it is a stripped down version of Microsoft symbols so that is why it is called public symbols this is very important for debugging as some of the commands or some of the extension commands depends on public symbols. Now let's see a demo in which we will see the usage of symbols how we can set the symbol and couple of commands which are related to symbols. So I have started a copy of the debugger and if I look here simple file path it is empty, there is no simple path mentioned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a notepad and going to attach to that notepad. So the notepad is started. It's a 32 bit notepad because my debugger is 32 bit. I'm attaching it. So now I'll explain this command which I'm typing a little later. Now what you're seeing is this is a call stack which I'm I'm looking at. So the command for call stack is K. So pretty much I'm looking at the call stack of the zero thread or the main thread. In the call stack, this is the first function, second function, third function, etc. So this particular function does not have any proper name, notepad plus an offset. Same with this. It's, there is no proper function name. We can see function names here without symbols. They are called export symbols. They can be incorrect in many cases they are incorrect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the symbols in the simple file path 
I'm going to put the Microsoft symbols so this is the Microsoft symbol the public symbol server part this is the local cache which I have and this SRV star and this star is needed as per the syntax of debugger so SRV star your local cache star your symbol server after that if you have extra symbol parts you can give a semicolon and you can give more path click OK to this now I am going to type the command dot reload so what is going on is it's loading the symbols or it is trying to load the symbols now I am typing the command K again so now I got a different stack altogether so previously this was not very clear and this functions were different most importantly you can see that in the case of notepad you can see the correct functions here it was an offset before now let me show you a couple of commands which are uh, related to symbols one is lmvm so lmvm is a command which gives you information about the binary so in this case it is not bad in that you can see that the PDB for the notepad is loaded this is the location of the PDB file another useful command is dot path so it says this is my current symbol path you can change your symbol path with this particular command it is exactly same as using this particular menu option through UI now if you want to reset your symbol path just to the Microsoft symbols you can type the command dot symfix so now my symbol path got changed to this particular path I don't have my cache in this new path looks like I have somewhere some white space at the end of the path that's why I'm getting this warning now I want to show you two more commands one is X and another is LN they are kind of mutually opposite commands X is used to get the address of a symbol so let me show you what X does so if I go into this particular call stack I have notepad win main now if I want to search in the symbol table I can use X notepad bang win main so I got one hit which is this address X will take star for example I can give star main star so I got all the matching ones so you can search in the symbol table with command X now if you want to find the other way now you have an address now you want to find a symbol for it that is ln so in this case is there are two matches which is kind of closer to each other so I have given double zero CE one three two zero I have an exact match here which is this symbol and I have an approximate match here it is just four bytes away 
it is also showing there is an exact match which is nothing but this so very useful commands x and ln related to symbols and that brings us to the summary so we have seen symbols and we have seen why symbols are needed and we have seen output with symbols and without symbols we have seen how to set symbol path in the debugger and we have seen a couple of commands related to symbols that's it thank you very much